What we have here is a closed proof of bread dough. What does that mean? It means I mixed this dough yesterday and I put it in the refrigerator to proof overnight. Now obviously the refrigerator is at 35 to 40 degrees. To keep it cold, it's not at 90 to 110 where you use yeast will usually bloom. However, it will still proof slowly. That's why we call it a cold proof because it's overnight or over a day or two days sometimes that we put it in the refrigerator. What are the benefits of that? It allows me to come in in the morning and have a dough with one proof already that I only have to form. Go in my proof box for a second rise and as we said the third rise and the dough will happen in the oven as opposed to mixing this in one day and probably waiting between four and six hours start to finish the time that dough is mixed until it gets in the oven. The other benefit of a cold food, it allows the yeast to develop more flavor, which will give you a more flavorful bread, and also a more flavorful crust. So I put a little bench flour down, I let this dough sit out, it's been sitting out for about an hour, so it's not stone cold, and it's easily workable for me to uh, work with. And now I'm able to form it. It's nice and soft, a little bit of bench flour down, no more than I need. I'm able to form it into dough. So I can get it in the proof box and start proofing. Now, you say, a lot of times people make mistakes because they'll read recipes and it'll say, oh, for an hour, proof for half an hour. It is all relative. What do I mean by it being relative? Well, if your proof box is very warm, or your kitchen is very warm, your bread is going to proof much quicker. If it's very cold, and there's drafts, and it's winter time, it's going to proof much slower. So unlike cookies that go in the oven that say 10 to 12 minutes, when it says the proof dough, we're really looking for visual signs. And that's a sign of the dough doubling in size. And not just an hour, a half an hour, 45 minutes. So we, we, we look at these that I, that I rolled out in the little baguettes. I'll know they're ready to go in the oven when they double in size. I'm going to slash the top of these to allow some air to escape. And I'm going to put them in a proof box a nice, warm, moist environment. So I'll work the four of them, then I'll get them all the same size. And we'll see what they look like in the end there. Chef, what if I'm working in a place that doesn't have a proof box? Well, excellent question, Chef. Chef's question was, if I'm working in a place that doesn't have a proof box. Well, if you're home, sometimes when I bake at home, I stick it in a car with the heater on and let it develop there. Uh, I put it inside the oven with the oven off, let it develop there, or inside the dryer. So I'm, I'm basically creating a warm environment. Now some of those environments, you can create steam or moist environment by putting some a cup of uh, hot or boiling water in there. Others you cannot. Uh, but Nonetheless, it will still proof in there, and your bread will still develop. Chef, how about on top of my oven? Uh, top of the oven can be. you got to be careful. For one thing, you want to leave the dough covered if you're proofing it outside of a proof box. Because one of the worst things for a dough is developing a skin on top, which will affect the final quality of your product. You also have to be careful that your oven is not too hot. If your oven is too hot, your dough will proof too quickly. If it proofs too quickly and you're not aware of it, it could exhaust, the yeast could exhaust all the energy in there and your dough will collapse and you end up with a very flat dough. So, uh, but to answer your question, just yes, you can do it on top of your oven. You just have to be more aware of the environment you're proofing in. What about a table proof? Uh, so a table proof or a bench rest 
can also happen. Again, you're going to dust the area with flour and you're going to cover it with a plastic bag or a cloth towel and you're going to let it sit and proof there uh, and that's perfectly accessible. Again, making sure that you do not develop a crust on that bread. Uh, skin, excuse me, crust is in the oven, a skin on that bread because it'll affect your crust in the final outcome of your, of your product there. So I'm going to have four of these. I'm going to slash the top. Chef, what do we have on the sheet tray? Uh, we have some cornmeal there on the sheet tray. That's going to help this from sticking to the bottom. It's also going to help with a, a crusty bread like this to form a uh, form nice flavor on the bottom, a nice crust on the bottom. going to get a little knife so I can cut these. Oh, nice. Seven slashes by definition, which a baguette should have. You notice that uniform size. Got them all the same. Now they're going to go in a proof box, and we'll check this in about, we'll say, a half an hour, 40 minutes, because that proof box is really hot. We're looking at the size now, and then we will look at the size when it visually grows in doubles and that'll that'll signify to me that it's ready for the oven. So right now I'm just going to put it in a food box. What am I going to make with seeds on it? So I'm going to brush the up one and dust it so far. Sesame seeds. Now I can roll this in seeds. I'm not going to use that many. I'm just going to what are we brushing on there, Chef? Uh, just a little bit of water so the seeds adhere to it. Why would you not use egg wash? Uh, egg wash I would use, excellent question, Chef. Egg wash will add color. And we said in the lesson of being yellow, we'll just follow water, use some salt. Uh, I, I don't want, I want the natural color from the crust itself. I don't want that added flavor or color from an egg wash. Now, with that being said, if I was making dinner rolls or uh, soft rolls, which a lot of you guys have made, I would use an egg wash because it, it's going to give me a different color and it's going to impart some flavor as well onto uh, that final product. But with my lean doughs, I do not want an egg wash. Uh, I talked a little bit about laminated doughs, like the croissants and the Danish. On those doughs, I would add a little egg wash too, because those are rich doughs, aside from being laminate. And uh, I would want a little bit of flavor on there. So this is set, I'm gonna put it in a proof box, you know, this is all about the same size. We're gonna check it in about a half an hour or 40 minutes. So as you see, we let these sit for about 40 minutes or so. Again, I said that time is relative, depending on the humidity. Heat, depending on the heat that you have available to you to proof. So now these are going to go in the oven. They're going to go in at 450 degrees for about five to seven minutes to help set the crust on them. Then we're going to drop the temperature to 350 for another half an hour, maybe 25 minutes to finish work. And we'll see what they look like when they're done. So you can see the finished product after about 25 or 30 minutes. Again, remember we went five minutes at 450 and another 25 minutes at 350. Nice golden brown crust. Nice crust on the bottom thanks to the cornmeal we had earlier put on the pan. And now, as tempted as I am, as 
good as these smell right now, I'm going to wait to cut them so the steam could uh, dissipate, the heat will dissipate and these will be completely cool. And you can hear near my ears I'm making a crackling sound. These have a nice crust to them. What is the purpose of scoring the top? Uh, scoring the top allows for the expansion of the dough. Uh, when, when it does that oven spring that we call, which is the final rise inside the oven, um, it allows some air to, to uh, escape and expand. Um, and it, a lot of times it's aesthetically pleasing as well, but the real reason is to let, let that dough expand and uh, that excess air escape to the top of the dough. So you could see the crumb and the aeration uh, from letting this sit and proof. You could see the formation of the crust. We put a little water in there, a little steam in there, so the crust doesn't form too thick you put or too in. quickly into the oven. Okay. Um, that's often why you'll see steam injected ovens or people misting the oven. So you get that formation of the crust. The crust can set up, but not set up too thick. And you got a nice crust on the outside and nice tender bread on the inside. So, Chef, what if I work at a place that doesn't have an oven that has the steam injection? Uh, excellent question, Chef. So you can get a, a, a steam bottle and mist the oven. Uh, you can put ice cubes in a bowl in the bottom of the oven. You, you could uh, spritz I, a little water from your hands into the oven to am, create steam. Am I putting that you bowl in? You could use lava rocks and pour some water over that to create steam. Okay, lava rocks, you'd normally put in like uh, a durable pie tin, a metal one, not glass. Let it sit in the oven and then spritz your water on top of there, or pour your water on top of there. So you're pouring water onto a hot item, which will form steam. For instant steam, okay. Instant steam. So if I put a bowl of ice, ice cubes in right before, it's not gonna create the same effect as if you get those lava rocks. Correct, you'll see some people put ice cubes but if the bowl is cold, it's going right in, it's not going to melt. So you need something that's going to vaporize and be steamed gotcha. instantaneously. And I can get those like at Home Depot? Home Depot is, is a great place to get a tractor right. supply and those places. 